Sadhana is practicing to understand the coordination between the mind and your instrument. Everything has to go through that sadhana uh, phase, otherwise you can never achieve anything. It stands for years of hard work and dedication and, and focus. To be in love is a suffering and I love music. For me, music is, is everything. So I'm really giving my life to music you know, every day. The nice thing about Indian music or any kind of classical music is that it actually is built on the principle of tension and relief. Well, I find a lot of the modern rock and pop music does not know about the relief bit. So it builds aggression while this music builds bliss. The easy part of being born in a musical family is you have music and talks about music 24-7. That's the only easy part. You have to work. There is nothing like this in the blood, nothing. You have to work. You want to do good work, you have to work really hard. My parents are all pianists, so the first, my first memories are piano and then started playing really early and uh, I think when I was seven, I, I took lessons, and then when I was, I think when I was nine, one day the piano teacher obviously dropped me home after the lesson, and he told my mom that I was talented but not in piano. And then that was the end of my piano career, right there. And then I started playing drums because I'm not playing an Indian instrument. I always have, a, a, I'm always in a different place. What I do is, it's outside Indian classical and it's also outside Western, you know, pure Western music. So I'm not, I'm not really in a place where, you know, people, people would say, oh, he's one of us. I met my Guruji, the great Pandit Suresh Talwalka, when I was 16. I saw him and we looked at each other and there was something. There was, yeah, there was, just felt really, really connected. And then he said, um, can you bring your father? And I was like, yes, why? And then he said, because I want to talk to him because you know, you should come to India and learn properly. And if you want to come, you can come with me. It just so happened that I just picked up sitar and um, I never left it. So, you know, it, if it was not for um, the sitar to have chosen me, I don't know why, it, why else would I have you know, picked it up and started doing it so seriously. I asked my Guruji about um, you know, what will happen of me. And um, he just replied in one answer that, you know, if nothing, you'll at least know yourself. So this is my own journey to know myself. And that I think is spiritual. When I was young, I was interested in spirituality and meditation but then the more music I played I realized that it's actually the same thing because you are while you play you're looking to get into that state of meditation or that state of non-thinking so you play and for maybe a fraction of a second your mind stops and you're just part of that flow of music it just happens and you just happen to be a part of it and that is for me spirituality or that is actually being connected to my own spirituality When you arrive at a point in life, you want to be able to express whatever you know in a particular manner. So you start looking for a teacher and you look around and you look around and you also start looking for a medium. So I looked around everywhere and I saw my father sitting at home. So I just submitted myself to that medium. Because you are Mr. Dakar's son, 
Zehamuddin Dagar son. There is a comparison, straight. You are not as good as your father. You should take a bit more training. You might not touch the instrument because you played a concert and it's so bad. For the next one month, you're not going to touch your veena because what you touch turns into crap, totally. At times, I felt like, okay, just take my veena and just burn it. I stopped practicing. I feel like this is not gonna work. You know, this is this is this is ridiculous. Like, you know, hundreds of hours. What are you doing? You know, this is ridiculous. It doesn't. It's not gonna work. The talent can any time go away from you too. So every day is new, and I think every day you have to be grateful that it is still with you. Actually, the first ten years were really a lot of grind, but slowly, slowly, I think we spend and you have faith, you walk through everything. And today, fortunately, people want to listen to something after 23 years. That's nice. You see, we all have to make sacrifices. If you like to go a lot dancing and you're working, you have to leave your dance and you go to work. <laughs> so sacrifice is nothing new in anybody's life. But once you are in your work, you don't feel you have sacrificed anything. It doesn't, it seems unnecessary to be doing that and better to be doing this. The first thing my father said, if you be my student, I will teach you. If you behave like my son, I'll kick you out. I remember his last concert. It was in a sitar seminar and uh, he pulled a particular note and the string just went out of his hand. He had a heart attack. And he didn't say anything. He just kept the veena down. And he told me, come and play. Sometime I listened to my father. So I said, oh God, my music has to be here. My music is not going here. You feel you're climbing and climbing and climbing and you're slipping and you're slipping and you're still in the same place. That is very hard. You don't see the end of the tunnel, ever. I think of something by afternoon, it has changed <laughs> quite a bit. By evening, when I sit with the tabla artist, uh, Gurdan, suddenly something new happens and we have changed everything. The first time we ever played together was in a studio for a CD. When we started the tour in Manchester, it was really, it was really calming in a way. Not in a musical sense, because we were really going crazy musically, but um, just for us to be able to bounce ideas off each other and see how we respond to each other's playing. <laughs> this is my tabla player, Gurdan Rayat. <laughs> it is very hard for me actually because, you know, it is going to be very soon my son's vacation time. And uh, sometimes I feel that this would probably be the time when, because he will grow up and I will never get this time to spend with him. So sometimes I do get into this very emotional moments when I feel that I'm away from him when I, I would have enjoyed him the most because, you know, he's free and uh, if I was just home for him, I would have just enjoyed my, uh, my bond with him much more. But then, you know, um, that is again a part of this entire process. So maybe that emotion will come through my music. <laughs> You can never say that something is worth the sacrifice. The sacrifice is in its place and the work is in its place. So we can never say the sacrifice was uh, less and probably this was more important, you know. If I was with them, I would have thought, oh, this is the best thing that could happen to me. And if now that I am here, I think this is the best thing I, that could happen to me. As soon as I start thinking about my son, I feel the emotions coming in and all that, but then you just have to control. <laughs> My responsibility of being a musician is, I think, the maximum towards the music. That I should not let anything come in the way of the music. You know, I'm just a medium and when I'm performing, the music has to just come through me. Probably I'll be nervous again if I sit on stage and look at those musicians and you know all the great maestros but I think I'm more at peace now you know and I'm just reconciled to the fact that okay whatever it is it is if it's a bad concert it's a bad concert if it's okay it's okay if it's good it's good I will learn in the end
I mean, you are there for the music. The people are there for the music. People are not there for you. Why should I get nervous? If, if I make a mistake, I will see it, they will see it. They're not going to be, you know, they're not fools. They don't have to be musicians to know that this guy has made a mistake. You know, there is an intuition for everything. I feel very empowered to do this, you know, because of the years of hard work and my years of studying in India. Uh, but then at the same time, there's always doubt. You know, there's always doubt whether it's possible. And that is part of being creative. Is it possible to make a statement which is true for Indian rhythm and Western rhythm? And I don't know if it's possible, it might not be possible, but it's worthwhile, you know, pursuing that dream. Being creative has a lot to do with hope. It's like a positive thinking because when you create something, it's not there yet. You're always creating something that other people thought wasn't possible or you even weren't sure whether it was possible. I'd like to play a little bit of drum and bass for you.
Ah, oh, I'm so glad it's over. Brilliant, brilliant. It needed to be over. It really needed to be over. It was, it was peaking at an extreme point now. It was just like the last two weeks was in my head was called end spurt, end spurt, end spurt, you know. And now I need a change. I really need to do something different now. I think we are going to start now. Yeah. And go to the door. They're ready for me already. They are. It's already 6.30. No, it's almost 6.30. I'm really nervous. I wasn't nervous an hour ago. I don't know, I get more nervous every year. Eventually, I'm just like not going to play. <laughs> I'm so nervous. Is it okay if I am at...
if you think that every minute that which you are living is actually just because of the grace of some supreme power, then you just start loving the suffering. I think pain is something and suffering is another thing, right? I mean, even if you have that pain or struggle to become an artist, even if you have the struggle of sadhana, life itself is a sadhana, so music is sadhana and the struggle is a part of the sadhana. So you should just love it.